Right, in this video we're going to talk about trellising. It's a, going to be a bit of a longer video than normal because we've got a lot to cover. There's the end posts and the ground anchors, there's the main trellis wire, the two pairs of catch wires, and uh, just generally talking about trellising anyway. But uh, we're using the uh, double guillot, or guillot as I always like to say, a G-U-Y-O-T system of training the vines. It's a vertical uh, trellising system, so the leaf wall is going to be sitting in between these two catch wires here. And so I put in the description below the relevant time segments uh, of the video if you want to jump to the relevant section. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got our ground anchor in the ground there. This one's a little bit out of the ground. I'd like them to go as down as far as possible, but I must be hitting a rock or something. So I just cannot get that down anymore, but it's deep enough. That's absolutely fine. I've got 4.2 meters of three millimeter steel rope. I like steel rope actually for the uh, end post because it's very, very flexible. It's fantastic. Um, so I've got 4.2 meters of that. And then down here, I've got um, a shackle, which will go on the end of the ground anchor. I've got a little eyelet, I suppose, whatever you want to call that. That's where the steel, the steel rope will go around that. I think from memory, this is a, uh, I think it's a four mil eyelet and it's a three mil rope. So there's a little bit of gap there, but that's absolutely fine. I wanted a four mil one because uh, just in case the shackles and everything didn't work, this just about fits over, over there but I didn't want to um, put it directly onto the ground anchor if I could help it, just in case I wanted to remove the wires and everything, all I need to do is just undo the shackle. So that's why I've got the shackle rather than just putting the eyelet straight onto the ground anchor. The only other things I've got are a gripple. These are fantastic, these for tensioning steel cables. Um, you can put the steel cable in one direction and it will come out and you can't pull it out again. So it ratchets it, you can ratchet it up nice and nice and tight. Um, and they're just really, really convenient. There's a special tool which you can use to tension these um, using these gripples. So first things first is I just put my steel rope through the staple, pull it about uh, nearly all the way, well not all the way through, but put it through. <laughs> um, put it round the post again so that it's looks a little bit like that. That's nice and simple. I'm going to leave about that much at the end there. I don't know if you can see that. And then with the other end, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my sleeve and put that through first, get rid of that for a second. I'm going to get my shackle, put my eyelet through the shackle, and then that through the ground anchor. Okay, I'm going to put the steel rope through the eye. I'm not going to worry too much about the eyelet just yet. And then I'm going to put the other end through that little crimp on sleeve again. So if I can just get that through. There we go. And bring that back up there. So eventually, after you've done the bottom end there, you end up with two wires that need to be joined somehow. And that's where this little gripple tool comes in. Now with wire rope, it is a little bit more fiddly than just using cable, but I mean um, steel wire, but eventually it will go through. You might need a bit of encouragement. There we go. So these work by allowing the steel rope to go one way, but you cannot pull it back. So if we feed the other one through as well, if we can. There we go. So we can tighten that up and make sure we're okay down there. That's fine. Okay, so that's starting to look, starting to take shape. I prefer not to get the guy ropes too tight at this stage uh, because we can always give it a final tweak once we've got the other posts in place down the row and we've got the guy rope um, uh, tensioned and um, in position on the other end and we can use this as a final adjuster um, but that's not looking too bad at all.
The trellis wire that we're going to be using is a galvanized two millimeter trellis wire and uh, it comes in packets when it comes through the post, uh, something like that, which looks pretty uninspiring, but it's 25 kilos in weight, so it's quite heavy. Um, and uh, the thing to note about wire, which is in a coil like that, is you sh you've got to use a spinner. Okay, so we've put our trellis wire all the way along the line and now we're going to put it on the end post and then tension it with a span fix tensioner. I'll show you how to show, oh, I'll show you how I do it anyway. I get it uh, through the little staple at the back. I pull enough through so that I can get about three, um, three revolutions around the, the post. Like so, I just keep putting it through the staple there. And I'll do one more, just so that it's really nicely fixed around the end post. Okay, so then we've got that sort of affair. Pull it nice and tight. Then what I do with this end is I bring it over, bring it under, but behind itself, if you know what I mean. So basically just doing one big knot like that. Then I'm bringing it forward, if I can like so, get a nice bit of a loop on there. Don't worry, once you tighten all this will become really nice and tight. And then to finish this off, um, what I'll do is I wrap it round, but to get a nice finish on it, I've got this sort of special um, fencing tool, very, very simple. Uh, this one's got tornado stamped on it, but you'll find them on eBay or Amazon or whatever under fencing tools. And uh, what you do is you hook the um, main hook onto the wire and then hook the bit which you want to twist around into the little v-shape there and you literally just twist it like this and it gives a really nice finish to the wire now we've got absolutely no tension on this wire at all that's why this is all slack at the moment but as soon as we put tension on the other end everything will become nice and taut but you can see what a nice professional finish this gives the, uh, the wire. So just, I, I try and do quite a lot of turns on this because I don't want the thing to um, unravel on me. And also it looks quite neat if you do quite a few turns on it. And the other thing, once I've uh, finished twisting it round, is I have the, the loose end pointing downwards. That way, it's out of um, sort of danger, just in case you're sort of bending near it or close to it. You're not going to poke your eye out or anything like that. But instead of leaving a, um, a long spike to it like this, I have it pointing down like that. And then I take um, a pair of clippers and I snip it as close to the wire as I possibly can. And then you don't run the risk of um, poking someone's eye out or anything like that. So this kind of knot um, when you go back on itself will prevent the wire from loosening once we put tension on it. So that's that end done and then now we'll walk to the other end and do the same to the other end and then we'll put some tension on the cable uh, with a span fixed tension and I'll show you how to do that. Okay so we've got our wire terminated at the end. This is not under tension at all at the moment this cable. It's all sort of really floppy and it runs up the row up in that direction and all we're going to do now is put some real nice tension on it uh, with a span fix tensioner. It starts off about a meter high here um, but it actually dips down almost to the floor down to the ground halfway down the aisle so there's no tension in this at all but there's a really really clever device that we can use to put tension in the wires really easily and that's these um, span fix um, spanner and span fix uh, sort of shaped bits of um, galvanized metal, I suppose. <laughs> Ever such a simple design. Um, I bought these uh, from Vigo 
limited in the UK, uh, but I dare say they've probably got agents around the world as well. But um, these are ever so simple. From about um, 600 millimetres in from the end post, so you don't have to be too accurate, but round about there, you put the wire on um, this sort of device here. You put your um, spanner on and uh, you can work out roughly which way you want to turn it because if you put some pressure on that it's wanting to twist back on itself like that and um, this hook here prevents it from doing it so on this particular one you want to twist in a clockwise direction it's very easy to twist but you're putting a lot of strain on the, the wire um, you can either terminate it that way I think we can get a bit more tension in that so I'm just going to do one more twist, like so, and now that wire there is absolutely singing. That's got some real tension on it, and even though on this video I won't be able to run the camera along the wire, that's uh, now uh, more or less uh, parallel to the ground. Um, there's hardly any dip in it at all and you can see how easy it is just to twist these I could even put more um, you know I could put more uh, tension on it if I wanted to but um, having these in place means that if you ever want to take the tension off it um, you just literally unhook it and take the tension out or if over time there's uh, get slack or the wire stretch you can put an extra twist in it to get the tension back up again but they are um, they are humming so that's absolutely brilliant um, so if you want attention wires or fence lines or anything like this um, I cannot recommend these highly enough they're so simple to use and really really effective so the main trellis wire goes about 105 to 110 uh, centimeters above the ground so there are thereabouts and uh, all we're going to do is just put a staple over the wire but don't bang it in all the way because you want the wire to be able to slide backwards and forwards if you ever need to tension it in the future. There you go, that's fine. So just do that all the way along on all the posts so that they're all about 105 centimeters above the ground and the next thing we do is tie in the stakes right um, all we've got to do now is just tie these canes onto the main trellis wire so that uh, we've got something to attach the vine um, onto something as it's growing up so this is a good opportunity to actually reposition these to what you think is um, going to be the best place for the vine. So I'm going to put it just behind here, down through the middle, and that means um, we can tie the vine nicely to it at a later stage. But um, anyway, we'll just put that down to the ground a little bit, have about uh, an inch or two poking up over the trellis line here. And what I use then are these little um, uh, metal twist ties and all they do is they just hold the um, cane to the wire and I just bend them around like, like that. And then you can get one of these tools, um, which you can get from eBay or Amazon. And all they do is that you put them on and you just pull and, and they twist. So here we've got a vine that's um, about it's been about two months in the ground and from basically nothing or from a tiny little shoot uh, when we put it in the ground it's now up to the main trellis line uh, which is about just over a meter off the ground and so this will grow probably up to about where my finger is here and then we'll cut off the growing head which is this bit here and we'll then find that the the main stalk thickens up um, over the summer and so when winter comes along it should be a really nice strong healthy plant to, to survive the winter.